Welcome to Move Together Strength Workout for Seniors. We're going to warm up today with a posture walk. That simply means make sure you're standing as tall and as straight as you can possibly stand. Your head is in neutral, so tuck your chin into the back of your neck. Get those ears over those shoulders. Relax the shoulders. They should be back a little bit and down. Make sure your pelvis is in neutral, not too far forward, not too far back, but keep your chest up. And don't forget when you're walking, it's heel toe, heel toe. You don't have to go fast. And I think you might need a friend. So it could be um, Joey, a nice small stuffed animal that you might have uh, lurking around your house. Um, or maybe a bean bag or something you have in your house that you can place on your head that's not going to fall off. And if it does, it won't be any big deal to pick it up. That's just going to remind you to keep your posture in the best position possible. And you're just going for a walk. It's not going to take long, a few minutes, maybe around your yard, maybe uh, just around your house somewhere. I'm not in a hurry. I'm thinking about my posture and I'm thinking about my friend on my head. I don't know if you have a bean bag at your house or a small stuffed animal, maybe a book. Remember the days when you were in high school and they wanted you to mind your posture? They weren't just doing that for entertainment. Uh, they knew, those teachers, that if you sat up straight and you stood up straight, that your uh, brain would get more oxygen, so would your muscles, and you would think better, and you'd be smarter, and you'd learn better. And when I'm walking here, I'm just taking my time because I'm on a, a path that has a lot of rocks. Can you see? Maybe not. And I, I don't want to trip. I'm also holding on to the camera. So a posture walk, it's all about balance. Yep, weaving in and out of my trees here and it's a sunny, beautiful day and now I'm on the grass and still got Joey on my head. Come on, Joey. Get your bum out of my face. Nope, not that way, this way. You can watch where we're going. So let's just saunter down the front yard here and, whoops, there goes Joey. Don't wanna drop it. There we go. So, when you're going about your day, every day, every once in a while stop and think about your posture. It only takes a few seconds, okay? You'll, you won't regret it. You'll live longer. Our first exercise involves a chair, some light hand weights that I'm sure by now you've been to a thrift store and you've picked up some hand weights suited just for you very cheaply. You're going to need to be able to stand from your chair. So make sure it's not too low. I've chosen this chair this morning to make it a little harder for me. It's a little lower to get into and to get out of. But make sure your chair is just right for you. And when you stand up, make sure the floor or the ground in front of you is flat. And you're going to be pushing the weights over your head. So make sure there's nothing above your head. So I call it a sit to stand curl with a press. So I put my weights at my sides, like so, keeping the elbows close to my obliques, my sides. And then as I stand up, I lean forward a little bit and I curl with a hammer curl. And then when I get up here and I'm nice and straight with great posture, I push overhead extending my arms and then I wait a few seconds up there to make sure everything's okay and then I go up on the balls of my feet to see if my balance is okay 
come back down on my heels, lower my arms, and then as I go down, I straighten my arms and sit on the chair. Let's try that again. Sit to stand with a press. And a balance moves the boot. That's my cat, Twyla May. She's always watching to see what she can learn so that she can be in better shape. Right, Twyla? Yes. Again, curl. It's a hammer curl. A press overhead up on the balls of your feet. Put your heels back down when you're ready. Bring your arms back down into the hammer and straighten your arms as you sit back into your chair. Make sure you're sitting on the edge of your chair and you're up nice and tall with your upper body. And make sure you know where the chair is when you sit back down. If you're not sure, and this is just way too hard for you, you could put one weight down, hold on to some part of the chair, help get up as you curl your arm, push overhead, maybe come up on the balls of your feet, maybe not, maybe lean back a little bit to work your lumbar spine, maybe not. Lower your arm, look for the chair with your hand, place your glutes on the edge of the chair. But maybe, just maybe, you can do it with me. Curl, press, up we go. Back down, straighten your arms as you come back down. Let's do one more. Curl, press, I'm up on my balls of my feet already. Back down. That was a little fast. I'd like you to do it slowly so you can be mindful of what is happening to your body and what muscle groups you're working with. Again. And straighten your arms as you go back down. There's a lot to think about with the sit to stand curl with a press. You can do it. It's a compound exercise, works most of your major muscle groups. To do the next exercise, you're going to need a band. Now, these things can be found at the thrift store too, and they are really cheap. <coughs> like this one. Some of them come, believe it or not, with pictures on the band showing you exactly what exercises you can do with the band. I had a few of those. I gave them to some of my friends. And in return, I ended up with uh, this really cheap band. Now, they also come in different thicknesses because the thicker they are, the harder they are to pull apart. So this one's an average one. It'll work for me this morning. But sometimes I like to have a few of them on hand so that I work my body at different levels. And since I'm going to do a row, and by the way, I call this exercise a seated row for my upper back. Yes, I'm going to be working the muscles in my upper back, especially my rhomboids, which are located underneath my shoulder blades, and they work with a bunch of other muscles up in my upper back to coordinate the shoulders. And I think I'll change my shoes to do this because I'm gonna wrap that band around the bottom of my feet as I sit in my chair. And I have these minimus shoes, they call them minimus shoes. I like to call them meniscus shoes because they're really good for knees and you have muscles around your kneecaps that are called meniscus to help keep the knees working properly. But they're really called minimus shoes and they're minimus shoes because the support in them is very limited. They allow your toes inside to spread apart because a lot of times we have these shoes with a lot of support and padding and our feet are just 
sort of squish together and we don't rely on our toes as much as we used to in the good old days when we ran around with no shoes at all. But now I've got these minimus shoes. You can get them at almost any shoe store that is a smart shoe store. And um, they're very soft and very flexible. I have a couple of pair. I've had them for years. Slide them on. I can use them for walking, for running, for jumping, and for doing a seated row with a band to work my upper back. So you're going to need a band, a pair of decent shoes, or no shoes at all, and a chair. And you're going to sit up straight and put your legs out straight with your heels on the ground and your toes pointing up to heaven. Grab a hold of the band, put it around the bottom of your feet, right in the middle. Hold on to the edges of the band, and you know what? Just, if you want to make it a little harder, twist the band around your hands to make it a little tighter. Sit up straight. Notice my arms, right? They're bent at 90 degrees at the elbow joint, sitting up nice and tall, checking my seated posture, and then I just pull my elbows back, as far as I can go. You'll feel it all across here and in your back. Your shoulder blades will come together. You're not going like this. You're going straight back with the elbows, sitting up nice and tall until you can't go any further. Count to three, two, one. And then when you come forward, go just as slowly as when you went back until your arms are straight again. So straight arms. Slide the elbows back slowly, as far as you can go. Keep going, that's as far as I can go, and maintain my great posture. And then I, three, two, one, and then slowly, with lots of control, I'm being as mindful as possible. I bring my arms out in front, hands holding onto the band, and they're nice and straight. Legs straight, back's pretty straight, arms straight, Got a good grip going on here. If I want to loosen it, it'll just make it easier and pull it straight back, straight back. Keeping my hands close to my sides, elbows way back there. Three, two, one. And slowly come forward. Now, I'm just going to add the breathing feature to the exercise, which you can add to any exercise you do. It just makes a lot more things to think about. Try it with one more little tight curl here around the hands. So I'm going to take a deep breath in through my nose. And as I blow out slowly, I'm going to pull the weights back or the band, which are weights. I'm going to pull them back. So here I go with the breath. Take a few breaths here. Three, two, one. Then take a deep breath in. And blow out as I straighten my arms. Yep, the hard part is blowing out or exhaling. You want to get good at that. You're trying to get rid of lots of carbon dioxide. You breathed in the oxygen. Now you want to get rid of the carbon dioxide. And so the longer you can exhale, the more carbon dioxide you can get out. All right, here I go. One more time. Breathe in through the nose. Exhale. Take a little breath break here. Got it? Right. It's a seated row to work the upper back. I'm sure if you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know about the big five or maybe even the big six exercises that you should try to incorporate into all of your workouts. And the push up, or I call it the push away or the push out, is one of them. And because I'm out on a great sunny day today and I, the weather couldn't be more perfect, um, doing my 
exercises. I'm going to use that garden chair I had there, that old Muskoka chair that I had when I was a, a little kid and still have. Um, I'm going to use that even though you could use any kind of a chair as long as it's stable. By that I mean when you're, you push on the chair, I don't want the chair to slide anywhere. So if it, if it you know, might get away on you, put the chair up against the wall. Turn it around so that you're leaning on the back of the chair and the, chairs, the legs of the chair are up against the wall and then it won't go anywhere. So watch what I do. I'm going to stand behind the chair quite a ways away, but I have to get my hands on the top of the chair. My arms will be straight. My legs are about the chair width apart, and I'm going to lean into the chair and come away from the chair doing a push-up, trying to keep my elbows from flaring out. I want my elbows close, you know, to the center line here, not way out here. So I'll just show you one. You watch first before you do them with me. So I've taken my old chair, I've turned it around. Hold on to the top part of it, got the top free, step back quite a ways, my arms are straight, and then I keep my heels, I keep my heels on the ground the whole time, arms straight, and then I lean my body, keeping it pretty straight, but on an angle, with my elbows in, not out and then slowly come back out. Maybe by turning the chair this way, you can watch. So chair is secure. I'm back quite a ways. I'm trying to, I'm not curling my back. I'm trying to keep my hips in so I'm on an angle. What's that, about a 50, 60 degree angle? My palms are, this part of my palm is on the chair. I might grip it, maybe not, depending on the top of the chair. And then as I slowly come in, keeping my back still at the same angle, my elbows come close together, not far away. And when I'm in this position, I can feel it, especially in my calf muscles, because I'm creating a flex with my, my foot at my ankle, and that works my calf muscles. But my legs are really straight, so I'm working my hamstrings. My quads are supporting those hamstrings. My butt muscles are working. My back's working. My uh, shoulders are definitely working because I'm using my arms. My God, the push-up's a great exercise. So I'm, I'm pushing in first with my body, holding it for three, two, one, and then slowly, don't hurry this part, push out, push away, push up, call it whatever you want. We're not down on the floor pushing up. We're standing and it's just as effective if you do it right. You don't want that chair to slide. And one more. Just take your time and be mindful. I'll do another one just for you. You can do it with me. Let's do it with the breath. So on the movement, we're blowing out or exhaling. When we're stationary or static, we're going to breathe in through the nose. So here goes, breathe in through the nose. Was that fun? Let's do one more. So the push up, push out, push away. Great compound exercise. One of the big five, big six that you need to do in every one of your workouts. No excuse. The next part of the workout involves getting that heart rate up. And you have a choice here. Just put me on hold and go for a walk up and down in front of the place where you live on the sidewalk. And when you're doing that walk, 
try to go quickly for approximately 20 seconds. That'll get your heart rate beating faster. And then when you turn around after the 20 second sprint walk, remember it's a walk, not a run. You just take your time and you just stroll back. Enjoy what you see around you. See if you can learn something new about your street and then turn around and repeat. That means you go pretty fast for 20 seconds. And then you turn around and you stroll back, take your time. It could take you two minutes to get back to where you started your, your quick walk. Okay, and then you do it three times though. 20 seconds quickly, turn around, and maybe two minutes approximately to get yourself back there because you're enjoying the world around you. That's what you could do. Put me on hold and go and do it. Or you can do what I'm doing right now. So we're going to just find a little bit of space so we don't kick anything. All right, this is a pretty good spot. And I'm just going to march. Now, this is marching, which is faster than walking. This is walking for me. But this is marching and I'm going a little faster. So what's what's going on yet? My heart's going, oh, you want more oxygen in those bloods? Okay, I'll just beat a little faster. Get rid, get rid of that uh, plaque that's in the way in the arteries there. Because I need to get that oxygen to those muscles. Right, you're just marching. And you can march it wide, which makes more muscles. So your heart has to work even harder. You can swing your arms a little faster as you're marching wide. But how long do we do this? Just for approximately 20 seconds. And then we slow down. All right, let me look around us. I can hear birds. We need to walk pretty slowly after the quick march for approximately two minutes. It doesn't have to be exactly two minutes. So I'm checking out the bird sounds. And I think I have a little birdhouse up there with some baby sparrows in it. They're calling their mother, I think. Let's just suppose that was about two minutes. We're gonna pick up the pace again. We're just marching. We don't really need to go anywhere to do this aerobic part of the workout. If you want, you can lift your knees a little higher. And if you want, you can spread your legs apart and you can work those arms back and forth. That'll get your heart rate up. But, oh yeah, just 20 seconds. And then we slow everything down. We don't come to a complete stop. No, just gonna keep moving a little bit. Keep the heart awake. So I've cut my grass. I've watered all my garden plants here. Raked my rocks. I'm ready for the third time, so I'm going to pick up the pace. Oh, just 20 seconds. Good work. Slow down here. I'm done my aerobics. So I call it the 20 second, two minute aerobic workout and you know what the latest research done by some scientists at McMaster University in Hamilton Ontario are pointing to the aerobic workout to get a healthy heart to look like the 20 second two minute and I don't, I don't need anything except maybe some good shoes some minimus shoes to do that Three times, three times a week. The last section of today's workout is the stretch section. Because I've worked lots of muscles today, I want to stretch those muscles. Now, I'm only going to show you three stretches, but these three stretches are going to work most of the major muscles in your body, whether you work them out vigorously today or not, you're going to get the ones that you did work out 
stretched and you're going to get the ones that you didn't maybe work too hard you're going to get those stretched too because these are compound stretches but there's one little catch just because we're on a video here uh, you should hold these stretches for two minutes to get the best bang for your buck if you don't have time to hold them for two minutes there's three of them just pick one of them and hold it for two minutes Okay, but I'm gonna show you three. And will I hold them for two minutes? No. Nope. This morning, I'm just gonna hold each one for 30 seconds. So you might go, well, I know I'm supposed to hold the stretch for two minutes. I really don't have time because it's such a nice day. I wanna get out and enjoy the world. Um, I'll do the one for 30 seconds with you. No, I won't. I'll do all three with you. For, that's only 30 seconds. It's only 90 seconds. You've got 90 seconds. So let's do the first stretch. It's called Charles Atlas. So find yourself a little bit of space, maybe some nice flat ground there. Notice my legs, shoulder width apart, maybe a little wider. I do a little mini squat, push my hips back just a little bit, sit in the high chair that's not there. Then I reach up and hold on to the sun I need that sun, I need that vitamin that the sun gives me, a D. I hold on to the sun with my fingers spread, spread apart. Okay, and then I look up at the sun. And I hold on to the sun and look up at the sun. Now I could lift my arms a little higher because the sun might be up a little higher for me or a little lower, but up a little bit. I want my head on an angle, that means my chin is up. I'm sitting in the high chair that isn't there. I've planted my feet using my toes and the sides of my feet and my heel right into that floor or that ground. Just breathing normally, thinking about what I'm gonna to do today. And that's 30 seconds. That's the Charles Atlas. The second one that I kind of like is called the ball throw. So if you just picked up a ball and you threw it, like so, notice my lead foot, it's out away from that foot that's back here. And when I follow through with the ball, this arm goes back and the back heel comes up because I really want to give the ball a toss. So I'm in this, believe it or not, lunge tandem kind of foot position which creates an unstable position for my for my body anyway so it's you know might you could fall over so you might go well you know what I'm going to do the ball throw but I'm going to be near something so when I throw the ball forward I can hold on to the counter or whatever the chair and when I come back my heel goes back down and if I want, I can lift my front toe or the balls of my feet at the front up to stretch the back of this leg. But for the sake of today, and we're gonna hold it for 30 seconds, I'm just going to throw, keep the back heel up a little bit, keep the front foot really, really planted there, looking straight ahead to see where the ball ended up and hold it for 30 seconds. And you know, we have two sides to our body, so we'll do the other side. So get into that lunge position a little bit and then throw the ball and hold it just for 30 seconds. I think I see my wife up there in the doorway waiting for me. Are you ready to go? We're off to the market and to the stores to get the vegetables, the fresh vegetables. We always buy, that's 30 seconds. One more. It's a oblique low back stretch notice my feet shoulder width apart 
So I push my hips one way or the other, doesn't matter which way you want to go. But if I push my hips that way, this arm, it's in the way, I'm going to reach it over, stretching this side of my body all the way down too into my legs and then this arm which has nothing to do at all yes it does it comes under this way up that way so i hold that one for 30 seconds my feet are flat breathe normally 30 seconds good and then i can go right into the other side push the hips way over to the other side swing the arm that was in the way over top and use this one too to get the complete stretch. These are three compound stretches, which means they stretch lots of muscles, not just one. And you should do them for two minutes, but we're only holding them for 30 seconds, which is 30 seconds. Great. Great. That's the end of it. It's not too long, this workout. You can do it. You might want to try it again in two days. Don't do it tomorrow. Do the workout every other day, at least twice a week, over and out.